Welcome back, everybody. Podcast number 25. Um, wanted to, uh, again, um, thank you guys for helping us with some some uh, topics to discuss. A lot of times I come up with stuff that just comes to me, whether it be something that we're doing in training, um, question that comes some way or another, but a lot of times it's uh, direct messages. So I'm going to do a Facebook one again. We did Our last one was a Facebook one. This is going to be a Facebook one too. I think it's it's going to come or be based on a Facebook question, um, but I do think it's perfect timing. I think it's really a a uh, great question from this guy. His name was Brian. Um, it was real. Uh, it showed me a lot of his awareness of what was going on. Um, he actually, I'm looking back on it, and he had sent me a couple messages. So I got a message from him back in May. This one that I was going to talk about today was a question that came in June, early June, a couple weeks ago. But um, so he. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't even realize. I'm just reading quick his last one. Um, oh, I, he had a four-month-old puppy back in end of May. So early, early, end of May, real early June. It was May 30th, actually, that he sent me this first message. So this pup's four months. So I'm doing the math right now, and I'm going, all right, dog's going to be five months uh, in June. Early, he's going to be about a little over five months around 4th of July. So here's here's what... I wanted to talk about because we have the 4th of July coming up. Um, we're about a week away, a little, little less, a little more than a week away. Yeah, next week. Week, week ago, week from two days from now. So we, the 4th of July is notorious for creating gun shy dogs, whether people like it or realize it or not. Um, I do think that the 4th of July in, in situations like the 4th of July, um, are the biggest culprit when it comes to creating a dog that gets nervous around loud noises, gun shy. Um, gun shy doesn't always come from guns. I think that needs to be really understood. I think most of the time it doesn't, unless you're real rammy about it and you just start shooting over young pups. I mean, that is one way to do it. Um, but I think a lot of times it happens inadvertently. And so this guy, Brian, um, he's from Iowa, and he sent me this message, and I thought it was him, I thought it was really a good question on his part because of his awareness of some of the things that were going on. Um, this was on June 4th, so literally one month ahead of time, he's, he's thinking about this. So I'm gonna just read his question, read some of my responses, and then we'll go into it a little bit. But it says, what is your opinion on age to start training to gun noise? My pup is four months old, which I know is young, but I'm worried about the 4th of July and my neighbor's obsession with fireworks, scaring him as long, scaring him as he is an outside dog. Thought maybe if I get him used to gunfire prior to the 4th, it won't be an issue. So I think um, I messaged back to him. I said, I think the time is right when the pup is ready, not based on age. I use retrieve in the intro process, so that needs to be first in place with confidence in a very in a very positive place. Four months old, I would not likely be ready to intro gunfire. I think there's a lot of risk, a lot to be risked too early and very little to be gained. As far as the 4th of July goes, I think preparation is the key. Not knowing what your scenario looks like as far as your neighborhood, I would try to get a feel for what risks there might be. His answer was, unfortunately, it's normal small town fu to small to medium fireworks to be shot off randomly basically the whole week as it became legal in Iowa. My direct neighbor has also a big night, uh, has a night that he sets off a big display that rivals most city fireworks. And it's close to me enough that makes my rattles, windows rattle. My plan was to have him let me know the night that he set off the big ones and probably just take the pup for a drive or get away from it. Just worried without intro to that loud noise prior to fireworks, it may be a poor intro. I said, um, I think you can start on some very slow, loud noises and bangs in preparation, but remember to do it at a great distance, slowly and incrementally. Over the next three weeks, I think you can go a long way in getting a pup ready for what might be they might hear on the fourth. I would still use caution and I have and have the pup protected the best you can over the holidays. So I'm just gonna go into that in a little bit more detail. Um, because I, I had a chance to think about it. I also had a chance to train with a good friend of mine um, recently, and, and I he talked about some intro stuff that he does, and I thought made a lot of sense. Um, I had not done in the past, and I, I really like it. Um, 
Also, I've got spry here, and, and there is a gravel pit down the road um, from us. It's about three quarters of a mile down the road, but they're blasting today. They've gone three times where they blasted, and my house shook. A really loud boom. You may end up hearing another blast here while we're recording because all the windows and everything are open, but um, it shakes the house, and spry gets nervous. Um, spry does not like that. Spry is sensitive, was very sensitive to gunfire. Um, she's not afraid of it. Um, and we've overcome any hesitation that she has towards gunfire specifically um, because of the incorporation of retrieve. Uh, she just loves retrieve so much. That was the key for her to get past or beyond the idea of she doesn't like these loud noises. So that was one of the tactics I took with her. Um, but it was a slow incremental process and typically, normally, what I do is have I have someone else at a long distance away um, firing a little cap gun. Um, or, or for a long time, my son would use a, a 410 and he'd be at a distance and he'd fire. Um, he'd watch when I was retrieving with the dog, especially with Spry, who's really retrieve driven. I would throw something, he would fire. It, she wouldn't, a lot of times he's so far away, she barely responds or reacts to it. And then I'd send her for a retrieve. And then we'd slowly work our way closer over a matter of a week or so until there was an understanding that that gunfire wasn't bad, wasn't anything reason to freak out or anything, um, actually was associated, started to get associated with some of this retrieve. Um, that was that's that it, it's a very simplified way that we did it um, And have had success doing it that way for years with lots and lots of dogs I start someone else at a long distance away now my buddy that I was training with this weekend His name is Craig Corp, and he's a real real knowledgeable guy um, in in I can learn stuff from everybody uh, I can really learn some stuff from him he, he was talking about how he likes to not have a second person involved when he intros these dogs to some of these noises. Um, his approach is himself. He wants to be the guy. And, and it made a lot of sense um, because he said, you know, my dog's ultimately the most comfortable with me. Now, I like the idea of it being me next to the dog for sure. Um, when in having the gunfire at a distance, he likes to be the creator of the noise, um, knowing that his dog has a lot of trust for him as well. And he, he's a big on... He's a very patient guy as well. He's not in a rush to do things. So he's doing these things a little bit longer down the, further down the road as well. But he'll start out at a distance and he's just, he's pitching a bumper and making some noise himself verbally. Hey, 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 hey. And then he's clapping and, and seeing what that dog does. And, and you think about it and you go, man, he's just clapping. It's nothing like a gunshot. But I'll tell you what, you can really, you can get some, Pretty, pretty quick, loud cracks by just clapping your hands. And so he likes to do it himself with this, make some noise, clap. See what the dog does, make a retrieve, we're good. Make some more noise, clap louder before he's ever bringing in a gun, gunfire. Um, I think with a young dog especially, that's probably a really nice, I, I, a technique that I'll probably try. Um, I usually don't get, I am, conscious of young dogs let's say like your dog this guy's dog is f f gonna be five months old so it's four months old when he messaged me in june the dog in in those couple months that you've had it you know you got it when it's two months old it's four months old here when you message me so you've had it for two months if you've been able to go for two months without that dog ever hearing anything loud like it's hard to do um, they're going to hear loud things especially when they're real little and you're not thinking about it and you got to be careful to try to avoid really loud things, but you know, doing some walking around and clapping when they're little, we do. Um, getting pots and pans out of our drawers in our house when the dog is on place is banging and loud. And, and I'm not beating on the pots and pans, but just literally taking them out of the cabinets makes some banging. Somebody drops a pot on the floor and bang, 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 bang. So that alone can get a little bit spooky for a young pup. So we want to make sure that we're not getting them skittish when they're real little. Use those chances as opportunities for training. Um, when there are those things that happen, something falls over in the garage and makes a big loud bang and the dog puts his tail between his legs and kind of scoots away from it. You see that, call them to you and tell them how good they are. Uh, let them understand that something following that loud noise isn't scary. It's dad gets happy and I get praised and start to connect some positive things to it prior to um, 
when those when those things come up, use them to your advantage. So that's when the training really starts to intro to gunfire. Anytime there's a loud noise. Before there is an unexpected loud noise, I recommend building in some loud noises. And loud noises is a relative term. Clapping your hands can be a loud noise. Dropping a pot on the floor or a pan can be a loud noise. Use, replicate things that potentially are gonna happen so they happen when you want them and you're ready for it and your dog is able to, you're able to respond really quickly to the dog and connect some of this positive stuff. Now when it comes to like you preparing for 4th of July, you're not gonna probably rep replicate some of the booms um, that are gonna happen. I do think uh, you know, it, and you've got an outdoor dog. It says I would bend the rules maybe a little bit and bring the dog in um, uh, when you know that's going to happen. I do think it's smart to talk with the neighbor and let them know, hey, I've got this young dog and I want to make sure we don't scare the hell out of it. Could you let me know when these when the big show is going to be? Because you know it's coming and you know it's going to be big. Um, don't if you want to leave, leave during it. If you don't want to leave, at least bring the dog in. Don't leave the dog out on its own. Um, because if the dog's out on its own and this stuff's going on, he has nobody to comfort him. He has nobody to say it's okay. Um, we don't want that. So I wouldn't hesitate to bring the dog in. Put the dog, bring the dog in and put it down in the basement. Um, put it in a crate down in the basement. Um, don't make it be the first time you've ever put the dog in the crate because that's a traumatic enough experience. Um, but this is all preparation stuff. Put it in a nice, soft, or a nice, safe, comfortable place. Put a blanket over the top of the kennel. Um, you get down in your basement in a kennel with a blanket over the top of it, the loudest booms in the world are muffled greatly. Um, so I think you want to prepare for that. And so a lot of you guys, over the, you know, in the next week, the fireworks will start. And so I think the preparation, the understanding for it, of it, that it's coming, is really key to your success in navigating through it. Um, I don't recommend... I think if you have the idea, if you have the opportunity, four months to me is a little young to introduce gunfire. I, I'm sure people do it, and I know people do it. Um, I don't know. It's like what I said to him in the message. I think there's a lot to be risked going too early, very little or nothing to be gained. I don't know what you gain by introducing four-month-old dogs to gunfire. Uh, you're not going to hunt them. So I don't know that you, I've, Cody, the dog that I'm training right now um, in our series, Cody Go Back, we're doing some handling work with her on our YouTube channel, got a new series out there for you, but Cody, I didn't introduce Cody to gunfire until she was just over a year. Now she had heard noises, she was comfortable with noises, she was really retrieving well. One of the things I talked about was I like to connect retrieve to noise because I think it helps some of these dogs get over it. That's what Spry did was got over it because she realized the noise is just connected to a something she really loves, which is retrieve, which early on she didn't love retrieve. She didn't retrieve until she was almost over eight months old. So there's no way I'm introducing to gunfire uh, a dog like her in, in involving retrieving when she doesn't even retrieve well. So I didn't introduce Cody to gunfire. She was retrieving well and everything, but I didn't introduce her to gunfire until last summer. Um, and she went up to Canada on a hunt in September. Uh, probably was a little early for her. I wouldn't have taken her. Uh, her, my, uh, her owner really wanted, um, wanted to bring her with. And I said, you can bring her with, but I think you have to have realistic expectations. She's ready to go, but the experience alone She's not ready to go and be productive. So the experience, the gain that she had, and I'm getting off, ta off track a little bit, but the gain she had by going on that hunt early was steadiness. We didn't let her pick up much. They didn't, they didn't have her pick up much. Um, exposure to a hell of a lot of, of guns, which maybe was a little bit much in my opinion. But you know what? I, we talked about it, and I felt comfortable. In, I felt comfortable knowing that his expectations were where I thought they needed to be. So Cody went on that hunt. But prior to that, I had only introduced her to gunfire probably four to six weeks prior to her going up there. Um, but she was over a year old. And so because she was over a year old, because we had prepped for it, it's a lot like hold conditioning. And again, now I'm getting off track again. But hold conditioning is a hell of a process. And it's a nightmare if you have zero or little preparation for it and you just plug in a dog that has all sorts of problems and you try to fix it with hold. It, it's, 
it's possible maybe, but it's really a task. Most people won't be able to get through it. What you really need, what, what, when hold conditioning becomes easy is when from eight weeks old or seven weeks old when you get the puppy until eight months old, which is probably about as early as I would be hold conditioning a dog. So you've got a six month window there that if you don't make a lot of mistakes and you actually prepare for the hold conditioning part by encouraging a dog to share a bumper with you or a dummy with you, hold onto the dummy when they come to you, uh, not play tag, not play keep away, not play chase. You don't do a lot of bad things between two months and eight months. And then at eight months, and they're retrieving decently, and then at eight months you decide, ah, I think we're gonna do hold conditioning because maybe something comes up or whatever your reasoning is, is now is the time is right and you start in on hold, it can be done really quickly and easily with very little effort and struggle if you've prepared for it properly. Intro to gunfire is the same way. If you prepare for it properly without formally doing it, but you make sure things don't, bad things don't happen prior and maybe some good things, some little baby steps take place towards the ultimate goal of intro to gunfire in that window of time prior, it makes intro to gunfire really easy. So in this case, for Brian, he's thinking the right way. He's got a four-month-old. He had a four-month-old puppy. It's going to be five months old here soon. But start making sure that the things that happen between now and when you truly would do an intro to gunfire are on the path, at least, going in the right direction, at least. They don't have to be completed and they don't have to be finalized, but at least put them in the right direction. And then when you get there, you're already moving you, you've got the momentum of what you've built into it to that point. I think that that idea can be applied to most things we do with dogs. Um, so getting off on a tangent, but you can na you name it, hold conditioning, totally. You can prepare a dog before you ever hold them, do hold with them. Um, steadiness. You can, you, it is not hard to steady up a dog that has not been spun up. It's easy to steady a dog formally when you've been steady from day one. That's why I'm a big believer in don't start out putting in these habits early that you're looking to have down the road because it makes it so much easier when you get to that point. Don't spin a dog up, get them loose, get them breaking, encourage it, reward it, throw bumpers for them when they break and get let them get retrieves and let them be hell raisers. And then all of a sudden you turn around 180 and you ask them to be steady it's uh, you're making your job so hard start out early on and build in habits early with reasonable expectations and understanding of what they're capable of and by the time you get to the point where you're gonna start doing some of this stuff more formally it just comes man it's really easy so that's the advantage of having young dogs that's the advantage of if you're listening to this right now having a young dog is a huge advantage um, because you've got a relatively blank slate and you control a lot of what gets put into them. Where if you've got an older dog, um, the disadvantage to the young dog, if you're listening to this and you got a young dog, you got that, I just told you what your advantage is. Your disadvantage is, is it's gonna take a while till you get to do everything you want to do because you can't rush it, not successfully. You'll have problems if you go too fast. So the, the downside of that young dog is you have to be patient. Your older dogs, um, you know, you can get into things a lot quicker usually if they're a little bit older because they should have a little bit more in them as far as foundation goes. Um, but if they don't, you're in the same boat as the puppy, just with an older dog. And maybe a little bit harder because they've got bad habits that have formed over a period of time that need to be changed before you can put the stuff you want into them. So um, just, again, off on a little bit of a tangent, but a lot of these principles and ideas that I really, really believe in um, can be applied to everything from intro to gunfire, to steadying up a dog, to hold conditioning, to place training, to uh, recall. Uh, you could, you could, you could, just about anything. You could uh, apply the same theory. So that's it, man. Number twenty-five. Twenty-five is done. Uh, we are a what is that? It's a quarter. To the century mark. I'm a number. I like I like little number games in my head, and we are one quarter of the way to episode number 100. So thank you for um, supporting. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you would subscribe, 
we'd love that. If you would uh, rate it, we'd love that. If you would uh, follow us on some of our social platforms, if you if you like this and you're not following us on our social platforms, I think you'll like our social platforms a lot more because podcast is good, um, but it's clearly it's audio. Um, we we film we actually are recording it right now. We we video them, um, and we're going to turn them into kind of like video podcasts um, on our YouTube channel, mm-hmm. but. You can watch them, but there's really not that much exciting. It's just us sitting in my kitchen. Um, but we, uh, on our other platforms, we've got videos, training videos. Um, I think some of those, some of those are real valuable because of how many mistakes happen. Um, I just think that you know, for us, with with Wonder Boy in the in the fold here, Ben, uh, he he has been such an addition to us from a. From a production standpoint, he's running better cameras and he's editing and he's versus me holding an iPhone for the way I did it for years. Um, not to say that that doesn't have value, but it's just it's harder um, to get the value out of it. But we've got these we've got these the, these tools with Ben that Ben brings to the table, and what really is um, the most valuable part is that he I, he edits. Um, you do some editing. But you don't cut out the stuff that doesn't look good, and you don't cut out the things that go wrong. Um, we're very candid in the stuff we we show intentionally. It makes us look makes me look bad uh, at times. I don't care because I'll be quite honest with you. I make lots of mistakes, um, lots of them. And and when my and my dogs make a lot of mistakes, and when my dogs make mistakes, I'll be the first person to tell you that it's primarily because of something I've done almost always um, rarely 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 do they truly make a mistake it has to do with how I set them up um, so I'm not afraid to say that um, I, I, I say it with zero hesitation I think that it's important for people to see it um, so our goal with some of that stuff like Cody go back and live with spry and some of that stuff was and those are all playlists on our YouTube channel but also on our Facebook, our Instagram, I just I've used Instagram stories a lot lately just to do really short little things that never make it anywhere else. They don't we don't put them on our on our what do you call the Instagram feed or whatever. Yeah. I don't put them on there. I don't put them we don't they don't get to Facebook. They're just they're simple little 15 second video, 15 second video, 15 second video of what we're doing. A lot of times it's training stuff. Occasionally I'll sprinkle in a cute picture of our little Lily and our new baby. But um, it's just, it's more a look into our everyday life stuff. Um, But I do think there's some value in it. And I think it connects the dots between some of the stuff we're doing that are being recorded. Um, This morning we did a a Cody Go Back um, episode. And we incorporated her jumping over a fence. And we didn't, it was really not a part of Cody Go Back series. But on my Instagram story, I showed her starting to go over and going over this fence. And she ran into the fence a couple times. And um, it's kind of funny. It's also very, um, it's very, very raw. Like you're going to see stuff there that just, it's just messy. But it's the same messiness that you probably are going to experience too. And if, if I only show you the stuff that looks good, you'll throw your hands up the first mistake that comes up and go, his dog doesn't do that. Yes, they do. It's what do you do when they do it, and how do you get past it? So that's it, man. 25 in the books. Thank you, uh, and we'll be back with more.